Hi, everybody. Uh, it's Eric again, uh, or maybe for the first time, if you're tuning in uh, from e uh, from uh, Ear Trash's channel. Uh, my name is uh, Eamrus2. My YouTube name is Eamrus2. Uh, uh, Chris and I are going to be doing a couple of collaborative uh, videos. We're going to kind of trade uh, spots back and forth. We're both uh, big fans of uh, Ableton Live, and uh, we have some different perspectives on it we wanted to share with you. So... Uh, one of the things I want to look at is a couple of quick uh, tricks and tips for session or clip view. Uh, I'm a big fan of, of clip view. Uh, I like uh, the live aspects of things and kind of uh, juggling things around in live sets and performing with live. So I wanted to start there and share some things with you. Uh, here's a, a, a really, really good one. Um, you may or may not be familiar with uh, MIDI mapping of clips. But uh, there's one really interesting thing you can do. If you, if you are MIDI mapping a clip, you go into MIDI map mode or MIDI learn mode, select your clip. If you have a MIDI controller like a keyboard, you, you press a low key and then a higher key, and it maps that clip to a range. So what that means is that the clip, when it's triggered, it is actually going to be able to transpose up and down according to that. So maybe you'll be able to hear this. Let's see. Uh... Right? Right? Pretty cool, right? So uh, it, it really gives you a way to perform with live as if it was a sampler. So that's my first tip. Second one, uh, and this is kind of another fun one, you may or may not have uh, noticed that uh, you can, in Clip View, if you rename any of the session or the, the scenes over here, uh, if you put, say, uh, 132 BPM, put that anywhere in the name, when that is triggered, when that scene is triggered, it automatically sets the overall tempo for Ableton. So say that one was 132, uh, go over here and change this next one to uh, 145 BPM, and I'm going to have one more, and I'm going to call that 120, whoops, not 11, no, that would have been really high, 1220, that would have been crazy. Uh, 20 BPM. Okay, so now when I click on these guys, uh, you're going to see up in the corner here, the BPM is changing. And nothing's happening right now because nothing's playing. And also, I can, when I trigger that scene, there's no clips in there. So it's a little bit weird. And that's going to show you the next, uh, the next trick I wanted to show you about. So say I select all the clips uh, in, across all the tracks in that particular scene, and I remove the stop button. Okay. Now what that means is there's there's nothing to trigger there. So if I happen to come up here and I trigger this clip, and I come down here, I'm going to trigger it with that new tempo, right? Now if I trigger this one, it stops the clip. If I come back here, it's going to trigger it again. And this one down here, it's only going to trigger the scene and the new tempo, but not stop the clip. Okay, this is a really cool thing, being able to... Uh, uh, trigger new scenes, but not necessarily stop all of the clips in there. Like, for instance, say I had this guy, and I put him down in here, and I happen to have a, something that's playing. I trigger the new scene. Only the new, uh, new slots that are in the scene that have clips in them that don't have uh, their stop buttons disabled uh, are going to be triggered. So it's kind of a, a great way to kind of pop around in different things without uh, affecting certain tracks. All right, now another thing you can do along those lines is you can actually deactivate clips. And that gives you a, a, an interesting way or an easy way to be able to like skip over certain clips without necessarily deleting them, and you're not going to trigger them. And you notice you do get the same option there of having a stop button or not having a stop button. A deactivated clip will never start playing, but if it doesn't, if it still has a stop button, it is going to stop other ones from playing. So like for instance, if I deactivate this clip here, and I, I can't play it, but it does stop the clip from playing. Now if I change that and I actually remove the stop button, you see I can skip right over there without uh, doing anything. Right? Okay, so that is removing the stop button. We've got disabling clips. Now the last tip I have for you here is I wanted to talk about how you can kind of put together scenes on the fly. So say I have this clip playing. 
make another cliff playing. Eh, I don't like those. I'm not these two. And this one. And this one. Now, uh, it'd be tough for me to remember during my set, my live set, uh, you, which ones exactly were, were triggered. So I'm going to come over here and just say, all right, capture and insert scene. So I insert a new scene that contains all the clips that were selected and playing at that time. So it gives me a, a nice way to just be able to come back automatically there and uh, go ahead and trigger that as a group. So those are the tips for today. Uh, tune in. You can visit us at uh, either Ear Trash uh, or at eAmorous2 here on YouTube. You can see all sorts of different kind of perspectives on stuff. I happen to notice that uh, Ear Trash is using a PC and I'm using a Mac, but uh, we're going to get along a lot better than uh, the typical because we have uh, Ableton to kind of keep us together on this. All right. Uh, we'll get different perspectives all around. Enjoy. Uh, be inspired. Do great stuff. Take care. Bye.